So a radical new mandate, apparently. That's what you're going to need uh, to, to try and take on the Tories. Do you agree with what Tony Blair's going to have to say later? Well, I don't, I'm not totally sure what that means, to be honest, but I think doing things differently is the only option for Labour. The reason that I stood in this leadership contest is because I saw this coming, the complete and utter collapse of our Labour base across every region and nation of the UK. This was no ordinary election for Labour. We've been losing for a long time, but this was something very, very profound, where people whose families have voted Labour for 100 years didn't just stop voting for us, but turned to the Tories. And that's why I said that we've got to change or die. Sounds lovely, but do you think you've done enough in the last few weeks to convince some of those hardcore Labour supporters, some of those unionists, that they are going to come and join join you in this race? Well, it's up to our members. I mean, when I started this, no disrespect, you guys were all saying, well, she hasn't got a hope because she's six out of seven. Uh, Piers, I think, was pretty scathing about my chances. Um, but actually, our members are thinking about this harder than any leadership contest that I can remember. I think there's a a moment now where it is recognised right across this country by Labour Party members that we can be a party that stands up for our values, that is compassionate, that is decent to refugees and asylum seekers, that cares for people on benefits and people with disabilities, and also be a party that goes out and wins that argument in the country. Well, how, how is that different, though, from what Labour did in the last election? What you've said there... Jeremy Corbyn could have said. What Tony Blair's saying, you might not know what he means, he's quite specific. He says that the policies of the last election were the policies for the last century. It was a Labour Party of the last century. It was going backwards to Labour values that related to a, a different world and to a different population. It's not the way the working class think and feel. They're dealing with 21st century problems. And I guess that was proved out because you lost votes in working class Absolutely. traditional areas to an extraordinary scale. Yeah. I mean I, I think I think that's true, but the um the I suppose what I'm trying to say is that in the past, we've had to choose between going with our heads, someone who can win elections, or going with our hearts, somebody so who stands up for Tony our values. Blair, then, Actually, did the win only way to win now is to do both. No, I, I, think, I think that he's right in one really important respect. Labour values are Labour values. We believe in a compassionate society. We believe in decency towards other people. Mm. We believe in internationalism. All these things are still true. But the challenge is how you apply that to the world, not as it was in 2010 or 97 or 2015 or the 1970s, the challenge is how you apply that to the future. So, for example, we talk a lot about wanting to nationalise the railways, and that is right, in my view, and we should win that argument in the public. But what about things like data? You should or where, you could. Where, where this is the world's most powerful commodity, mm -hmm. and we've had very, very little to say about the liberalisation of data so that it's used not for private profit but for public good. These are things that really profoundly impact on people's lives because this is one of the things that is stopping us from being able to advance medical research and being able to improve people's lives. So there is a really pressing need for Labour to get on the front foot now and start talking about the world as it is now and will be in 2024 and to give people not just an opposition to the Tories but an alternative. OK. Who do you think, apart from yourself, you're hoping in six weeks' time, is the greatest ever Labour leader? Who is your hero as a Labour leader? Well, I think that, in all honesty, there have been a lot. Um, so, Attlee is the one that we always talk about. Barbara Castle was the great leader that never was. And if she'd been a man, I'm sure she would have become leader of the Labour Party. Very much hoping that we're about to elect Labour's greatest leader in a few weeks' time. You don't mention whoever she may Blair, be. Tony Blair, who won a general election, uh, won, won three, three general fact. elections yeah. and stayed in longer than Harold Wilson. Well, I came into Parliament partly out of frustration with the new Labour settlement, but also full of admiration for things like the minimum wage, which were complete game changers in towns like Wigan, and later the education maintenance allowance, which Gordon Brown brought in, which was mm. just so important. Although we were arguing a lot about tuition fees in the Labour Party, actually it was the education maintenance allowance that got young people through college in constituencies like mine and onto university. So there were amazing things that happened during that time. Mm. But one of the frustrations that I had working with homeless teenagers for the charity Centre Point was that we didn't do enough to actually break the settlement that would have allowed them to go on and have real power over their own lives mm. to actually change their lives profoundly for the better. We had an economic model that took small amounts of wealth from people who had a lot at the top and handed it with conditions to those at the bottom. I'd like to see us be more radical. So I think the assessment of Tony Blair's time in office 
is that it was game changing, it was important. But to earn the right for a hearing with the public about the things we got right, we've also got to be honest about the things that we got wrong. So, um, so you're hoping to be leader, you're hoping to be elected, you're hoping to be the game changer. Um, there are huge events that happened overnight in Germany. I don't know whether you've had a chance to catch up with them. A shooting and the loss of nine lives, um, five others at least injured. Uh, the police there haven't ruled out it was a far-right extremist group that conducted this. Um, we're still processing the news and news is still coming into us. But I guess one of the things that you would have to do is tackle and deal with a situation like this. And the accusation is that, that generally across Europe, we have been perhaps sleeping on the rise of far-right extremism and the Labour Party has been seen to have failed to tackle anti-Semitism within its ranks. What are you going to do about it? Well, I've said that it would be my first priority as Labour leader and I think the public can trust me on that because the last four years for me has been a story about having to stand up and speak out often against my own party leadership. Not something that is easy to do as a Labour Party member and as somebody who feels that we ought to have disagreements behind closed doors but absolutely the right thing to do because we got it so, so badly wrong on anti-Semitism. And it's existential for Labour. It came up a lot on doorsteps, including in my constituency in Wigan, where we don't have a very large Jewish population. And the reason for that is that people in this country, they don't like extremism, they don't like nastiness, they don't like discrimination. And they felt very, very strongly that if we wanted to go out and argue for a more compassionate, equal mm. society, then we had to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. And so I've said that it would be my first priority as the leader of the Labour Party, because you're right, that this is becoming a real problem in Britain, not just in relation to anti-Semitism, but we've had the far right targeting my hometown in Wigan over and over again in recent years. And it's working class people in those communities who've stood up over and over again and run the far right out of town. We did it with Tommy Robinson last year. If he turns up again, we'll do it again. Mm. And Labour has to be right there standing with people across this country when we try and deal with this. Let's talk about an another issue that Priti Patel has outlined yesterday her new policy, a new strategy for tackling immigration, yeah. which, you know, let's face it, was a very big factor for a lot of people in, in recent elections, and it's a concern for a lot of people in, in your constituency and people that are concerned about immigration. Now, her, she's saying that actually we, we're not going to allow visas for low-skilled, and I hate that term, by the way, mm. but um, low-skilled workers from abroad. Um, the fact of the matter is a lot of people saying it won't work, and, and we were talking earlier it won't work, but what's the, what is the alternative? Because this is an issue for lots of people in your constituency. How are you going to tackle, the, whether it's an issue with immigration itself or the feeling that there's a problem with immigration, how are you intend to tackle that with your, with your voters? Well, I, I spent a lot of time talking and thinking about this with my constituents. I represent an area of the country that voted by two to one to leave the European Union, and free movement came up a lot over the course of the last decade. The reason that free movement, I think, became very unsustainable in towns like Wigan is because people were quite happy to see us bring nurses across to work in the local hospital, people coming into our social care sector to help care for our elderly relatives. But what they really felt strongly about was that that hadn't gone alongside investment in young people in towns like Wigan. Mm -hmm. So when I was knocking on doors saying, look, we've got people coming over to work in our hospital, they were saying, that's great, but my daughter's just lost a nursing bursary, you abolished the EMA, we, she hasn't got a hope of getting a job in that hospital. And that really, really matters to people. And what worries me about what Priti Patel is doing is not just that it seems very in line with the sort of dog whistle politics that we've seen from the Tories in recent years, we don't like immigrants, Britain's got going to close its doors, but it's also actually about saying to people in that social care sector, you're not highly skilled, mm. and doing nothing to put investment into that sector and into people who work in that sector. So, so let's just so you would standards. you would open the door to low skill workers from across Europe or, or uh, other countries as well? The, the first priority I would have would be to invest in skills in this country. I think that is the only way that immigration becomes sustainable. And so raising up the standards so that young people in um, towns like Wigan can choose to go into the social care sector and care for 
older people, for children in this country, do one of the most important jobs that there is, knowing that they'll be paid properly, mm. that they'll get the qualifications that they need and that they'll be valued. Mm. I couldn't believe it when I heard ministers out this morning saying that social care was a low-skilled job. Mm. This is one of the most I, I important don't, I don't things that like happens the term, in this country. To be fair, low-skilled. You know, my dad was a bus driver and I think he was very skilled. You know, yeah, it's a know, skillful yeah. job. You yeah. know, taxi She's driver is a skillful job. You, you yourself are a daughter of an immigrant. Yeah, so your that's father's right. Deepak yeah. arrived from Calcutta in India? That's yeah. right. Came over here in the 1950s to study um, and uh, lectured at different universities and then ended up um, as part of the race relations struggle helping to write the Race Relations Act, which is something that I'm really proud of. He, he might quite, be watching he, right he now, He was actually. educated... Hi, Dad, if you are. <laughs> I think he was educated at India's equivalent of Eton, though, wasn't he? He was, so he was educated by Jesuits, and he's always felt mm. very, very strongly about education as a result, because he always says to us... You know, I grew up under Margaret Thatcher at a time when my comp... There was, you know, one book in three mm. to go round, and kids were, like, scrabbling around looking right. for pens in the Lisa, school let... cupboards. He really feels strongly that other children should have the same well, opportunities. Talking of schools, Lisa, and welcome to the world to answering a variety of questions on <laughs> oh, Good Morning go. Britain. Because in your constituency, mm. there is a school, Shevington High School. I don't, I know, you, do yeah. you know Shevington? Yeah, Chevy, yeah, yeah. Were you also aware that they are issuing a school guide as part of their sex education... She's worried now. She's not prepared for this. Yeah, yeah, you've got a picture of it. You've got, actually got, got a, a diagram here. Uh, there, there's this? diagrams also. So it's a school guide, and the idea behind of it, I don't know if they produced the guide, but they're certainly issuing it, is that they are um, issuing a guide to encourage Year 9, so 13, 14-year-olds, to look at other options rather than sex. And on the list of things that they can do are <laughs> sucking toes, um, proposing marriage buying each other nice underwear or buying them a piece of the moon. Now, this has caused a flurry, to say the least. Parents are concerned that uh, Year 9 students are being encouraged to suck toes. Just out of interest, who wrote it? Uh, who do we know actually put it together? Spectrum. OK. But it's been distributed in the clause. Spectrum Community Healthcare. Are you familiar with them on behalf no. of the NHS? No, never heard of him. Um, it sounds quite... Uh, strange. OK. Um, I mean, I suppose the, the thing I would say about Shevington High School, though, is one of the best schools in Greater Manchester, and the reason that it is... The toe is sucking. Because they uh. Well, because they... Because they... <laughs> because they <laughs> just stop it! It's like laughing. <laughs> because they think that... Because they, they deal with the realities that young people are facing, and 13 and 14-year-olds nowadays are under a lot of pressure, and they're under a lot of peer pressure, particularly with things like social media. You know, I've had girls in my constituency come to see me under pressure to share images of themselves online, and actually it's really important that we're talking to you know people I th about I th this I think that's a fair point. I did say earlier, I mean, it's, it seems quite shocking when we read this, but, you know, in Wigan, the, it, you, 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 don't, you don't know what the, you what the said, conversations are happening. But, you I, know, I it, said it, if you're the head teacher of Shevington High School, you're hey, about look, to get a phone call from Lisa and Andy. Hang on, look, some of this is really nice. Walk a thousand miles for one of their smiles. Yeah, oh, you like that, do you? Yeah. I mean, the after, you, idea, after you've sucked their toes. I guess the idea is we've had a lot of comments from people actually at home saying, in their experience, um, toe sucking leads only to one thing, and they don't want <laughs> What's their that? year Tick nine gum well, disease. I, I'm, that, yeah. I'm editing it. I'm editing it. Well, look, um, the, the best bit uh, about this is that apparently, when the kids were given it, they all started laughing. So I think it shows that 13. Well, I mean, I, th I think have a, it is a bit more realism and a bit more well, of a sense of humour well, than we give them credit for. Well, I think there's a, I think there's a fair point in that. Really, they're 14 year olds, 13, 14 year olds, and I think we're of a different generation. And actually, you know, they are having these conversations. So you can't Maybe you're trying to get involved in it. Yeah. Oh, I wonder how much it costs to produce on behalf of the <laughs> NHS. That's <laughs> one of my concerns.